So as a lifelong Chrome user, I've never really used anything else for browsing other than Chrome. Sure, I might have used Firefox here and there before and Edge on the odd occasion to download Chrome from in the first place, but I thought it's 2024, why not give it a shot just for a week and then switch back? Who knows, there might be things I like about Edge compared to Chrome, despite both being Chromium based. So with that, I took the plunge and switched to Edge for an entire week, I know, life changing. Well, sort of, when you've used your computer as your primary device for work, video editing, content consumption, etc. So how did I do? Well, I guess to find out, let's begin. So opening Edge, the first thing that strikes you is that, yep, this has been designed by Microsoft all right. The amount of icons and clutter and bloatware just makes it obvious. We'll get to that in a bit. First is the UI. Overall, it's okay. It looks similar to Chrome. The URL bar is a lot more condensed and the page is rounded, which is okay, but they appear almost in this window, which I'm not sure if I like. It kind of gives me that extra bezel feeling. And if you know me, I don't really want to be adding more bezel. Anyway, going back to the various icons, I wanted to see if there were any that could be beneficial and a few of them actually work. For example, this button here allows you to go split screen mode. At first I was thinking this is a bit gimmicky, but then I guess it can be toggled on and off so it's not too big of a deal. But then I thought about how useful this feature would be when working on some homework or some other reference document and typing in the other tab as opposed to having two separate browser windows side by side. This is definitely a neat feature. Again, it's clear that it's been thought through as when you press the three dots in the top right of the split screen window, you can organize this in various ways and enter horizontal split screen mode as well. So there is that. Following on from this, other icons include the favorites manager, which is okay, standard I guess, the collections feature, which I don't think many people will have too much use for, then browser essentials, again not many people are going to use this either. You can customize what icons show up here to your needs, which is something I'll discuss a little later in the video, but that's done from the settings, which you'll find in the three dot drop down menu. This menu generally is pretty similar to that which you'd find in Chrome, so that's standard I guess. Right, so now that we have that sorted, we now move on to the Microsoft Copilot button, which is their AI assistant. Personally, while a small group of people might find this useful, majority of people probably won't ever go into this menu, and I personally think it's a bit cluttered too. It's cool that it's baked in, but I'll stick to ChatGPT for now, especially with the split screen feature in Edge. It just makes life easier as you can have a chat bot on one side and your document or whatever else on the other on the same tab. Talking of tabs, heading into the tab bar, there's your profile icon, which I guess is alright really, but doesn't really serve much purpose, and I think it could probably be moved somewhere else to save your tab space potentially. Workspaces are also another feature in Edge, which again I don't think many people will use as it seems quite heavily focused on collaboration documents. What's most interesting though is this button, the vertical tabs feature. Enabling this places your tabs on the left, clearing up the top of your screen, provided you right click and then select hide title bar. Now things go right to the top of your screen and the X and minimize buttons optimize well too. This is definitely useful for those on smaller screen laptops and want to make use of your vertical screen real estate. There are a few options you can play around with as well regarding the layout to make this setting work for you. Right so that was a general overview of the UI and the main surface features, but what about some more niche things on a day-to-day -day use? First up is the new tab page. So the Microsoft start page is the default for the new tab page in Chrome. Overall it's okay, but a bit too cluttered in my opinion, but thankfully you can just turn a bunch of options off to go from your tab page looking like this to like this. Much better. Plus you get to enjoy a nice image as well that changes daily. The search bar in the middle of the screen I did also change to search with Google as well, because you know, full screen mode. This is definitely something Edge does better than Chrome, purely due to its implementation. For example, if you're in full screen in Chrome and you need to see your tabs at a glance for a second or just quickly need to get out of full screen, then you have to manually press the X and then enable the full screen again with the F11 key. In Edge though, the top and sidebars come into view automatically for a moment and then hide away after moving your mouse away from these areas for a bit. I find this much better of an integration for full screen and find myself using full screen a lot more with this method. Again, I don't think it'd be too bad to have a toggleable setting for each of these two behaviors. The PDF editor. So Edge overall has a decent PDF view I would say. Some of the things I liked, again coming from the Chrome experience, was the two page view. This is seriously useful for those of you who want to see the PDF as a book or even want to see how it would be printed. Chrome does have this but only found out about it as I was planning this video due to it being hidden in these three dots. So I guess that says it all really. One advantage that does remain though is that Edge allows you to omit the first page with a handy toggle so that it could be useful for cover page for example. Carrying on with this theme, Edge also has various drawing and annotation tools to enable you to edit and mark up your document. I really don't know why Chrome doesn't seem to have this yet. Also, Edge provides more of those modern AI features, with Copilot being integrated into the toolbar, as well as the direct translation feature, which again, Chrome should definitely be using when Google Translate is used so widely. Some things Chrome still does better though are the small things, such as the contents page not having an option to stay open in Edge, zoom percentage not shown, or controllable in Edge. 
and just the overall smoothness when scrolling. There seems to be some weird artifacting in Edge at the top and bottom of your page as you scroll, as it seems that Edge only keeps what you see on your screen in memory and then has to load everything else as you scroll, as opposed to Chrome which keeps everything smooth and natural, though this is likely at the cost of RAM. The settings. So in regards to the settings, there are way more of them in here to mess around with compared to that of Chrome. So I'll just go over the key ones that I thought were interesting. So you can toggle on and off the various icons that I mentioned at the start of the video in this section. You can also toggle your browser history and download icons so it appears in the ribbon as well, which could be quite useful. In the customized browser section, there's something called mouse gestures, allowing you to right click on your mouse and then make a gesture to do certain commands. So there was that. Though I do wish that they implemented a two finger version of this for trackpads. I mean, most browsers do have have the back swipe and forward swipe with two fingers to go back and forward on a web page already but yeah if you didn't know that then i guess you're welcome again comparing to chrome i do prefer chrome's minimalist settings look to suit the masses but edge certainly does give you some nice customization if you really want to get into the deep end with things so what's the verdict then do i recommend edge over chrome no but maybe i mean there's lots to like about edge and certainly has improved from its previous years being powered by chromium and receiving many updates since then i would imagine but unless you really like the standout feature Features like the vertical tabs, Microsoft Start, the more expansive settings, better full screen implementation, or the PDF viewer, I don't think you should really switch to Edge. With Chrome, everything syncs nicely with your Google account and just works for a lack of a better word, and switching would just create more friction. Not to mention that most of these features that Edge has, or does better than Chrome, could all be achieved with some extensions, further reducing the need to switch. Also, the PDF viewer you could specifically set to open in Edge from within your operating system, so you kind of get the best of both worlds from there really. I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to try something different then sure give it a shot as they're very similar at this point but I just feel like the friction might be a little too much for some people. So now if you ever decide to switch to Edge or if you accidentally happen to open it you can now have a much more pleasant experience with a few setting changes and tweaks but those are just my opinions. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway thanks for watching be sure to subscribe and I'll see you later.